what's up y'all in this video we are going to talk about converting schlag to wiser or quickset why would you do that you might ask well in the last video that we did of of changing up changing up things from one lock brand to another we talked about the newly announced Schlage smart key quick set rekey smart key cylinders and I'll post a link to that video if you have not seen it but yes quick set has come out with a Schlage rekey smart key cylinder and I didn't even think about it when we were filming that but somebody I think it was Peter posted in the comments that he bet that was because of the prestige line or the Baldwin handle sets and that makes a lot of sense so that's probably why they did that because people come along and order or buy Baldwin and up until I guess now we have the they had the the quick set smart key and people were like I have a Baldwin key why why do I why are you selling me that why do I have a quick set key and a Baldwin lock because I wanted it I wanted this to fit my Baldwin key so presumably they did it for that series of lock and uh you know we we don't know for right now whether or not that's going to be a thing for just the handle sets or if they're going to make it available with knobs and levers and all this other stuff in their baldwin line but for a while now schlag has actually had wiser or quickset because if they're wiser plugs they'll work for quickset cores that you could switch out and again why would you do that and that's what we're going to talk about in this video so in the knob world quickset wiser schlag are you going to be your top three ones i've got master which is kind of a copy of a like a defiant it comes wiser or schlag keyway and then you've got original wiser which is pretty much the same as quickset if we take it out of the box we've looked at wiser locks before it is a a quickset lock with wiser name on it however quickset keys will will work in a wiser keyway because they're thinner but quickset wiser keys would not work in a quickset lock so i usually sell wiser for quickset because i get case quantity on wiser locks there is a problem with the doorknobs in particular and we're going to pull out both of these just to show you what that is and uh every lock manufacturer has their own little problems has their own issues but we've got a schlage f series right here i'm sure if you can see that right there okay so we got that mounted up on a display already but one thing with wiser quickset uh master and most others defiant uh, a couple others uh, some of the more common cheap ones that are out on the market when the lock is in the locked position so you turn the button on the inside locks the outside knob to get out the door you walk up and and it's locked so you have to physically turn the button and then turn to get out the door that is in a business setting that would be considered not code compliant because you're supposed to be able to one motion egress which means get out in one motion and that automatically fails that because you have to turn and then turn of course in a commercial environment you hopefully have commercial lever handles as well to meet ADA codes. Uh, and that's the same across all brands, right? So it's locked, walk up to the door, turn the button, unlock it, and, and, and there you go. From the other side, you turn the key one way, turn it the other to lock and unlock it. However, Schlage, I'm gonna use this older example, F-Series, uh, and a series has always been able to let you go out without turning the button in this case this is an old dur this is an old uh old old f series and uh, we see it's locked on the outside we turn the knob and it lets you open the door on the old old f series that kept it locked this was a big money maker for locksmiths because people would 
in it, with it in the locked position, open the door, and then close it behind them, and the knob is still locked, thus locking themselves out. If you're a locksmith watching this, you know that this is one of the biggest things uh, that, that brought lockouts, residential lockouts, is the F-Series and the A-Series because it behaved the same way. If the button was pushed in and turned, you could open the door, let it go, and it'd still be locked. Three or four-ish, five-ish years ago, Schlage came along and changed that. And we're going to take this new F-Series, or what is current production F-Series, and uh, we turn, turn it here. So it's horizontal, that locks the outside knob. Walk up, turn it, and when you let go, or as you're turning it, it actually unlocks the outer lock. So this is a much safer lock to keep yourself from being locked out. We're gonna look at that one more time. So in the horizontal position, it's locked. And if you watch the button as you turn it, right about there it springs to the unlocked position. So that pretty much eliminated most of the residential lockouts on scene. However, as far as being built, the Schlage, even though again, it uses nowadays, it uses, you know, it uses your pot metal cylinder, especially in the dead ball, we've talked about that. The quick set, has always had the problem of the sharp pieces of metal. That's right, right here. These two, two notches. What happens as you turn it? You can see, you can see how it's contacting. So, after even just a short amount of use, especially heavier use, it's going to cut that metal bar right there. Is going to cut a groove right up in this area. And what it is, get deeper and deeper and deeper. And as you try to turn it and turn it, the latch does not pull back as far. And eventually it'll totally break and, and you can get locked out. That's one of the downfalls of the Wiser and the Quickset brand for sure. That's one reason why we try to kind of push uh, because they're, de they're decent. The Master brand's decent. He uses a tubular latch that does not suffer from any of those same problems. Uh, it's not the greatest lock in the world. It's a little bit lighter. The brass is a little bit thinner, but functionally, in my opinion, it, it really is one of the better ones for a wiser keyway. Then you come up on the Schlage again, the newest generation of Schlage, even though it has the compressible cylinder, which Again, we've already got this one mounted, so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead, turn the key. Doesn't matter which way, it can be locked or unlocked as long as the key is turned. And then over here on the side, you've got your, you've got your little retainer. You just press it through that slot right there. Take your core out and re-key it as normal. However, if you, for some reason, let's say, had a bunch of quick set locks on your house and, and you buy the Schlage lock, there is a way to switch out to make this work for your quick set or your wiser key. But again, that's a little that's a little pushy. You can you can do the deadbolt. You've always been able to do the deadbolt. We're gonna go ahead and move up here. I'm just gonna take this deadbolt off the door because right now we have it set up to to this Schlage key. Now there's a couple of ways you can do the deadbolt. And as I mentioned, there is one very valid reason to switch out cylinders. And that is your handle sets. Handle sets being the fancier like Camelot or Addison or even Plymouth style with the thumb thing on the outside where where it comes with the, the thumb press on the outside and either a knob or lever on the inside. Quick sets and wisers are honestly pretty dang horrible. I mean, I can't help but say it, but they're pretty dang horrible. So you do have two options with the deadbolt on those handle sets. And you, and you might notice that, that this one still has a shroud. We just did a video 
on the whole shroud thing. So I'm going to go ahead and take the shroud off because you will not see this anymore in current production. It looks just like that. And you've always been able to remove the cylinder and switch it out with a key and knob style cylinder. However, there is one little issue with that. You do have to use the tailpiece. If you look at the latch here, we'll bring this back over and put it in. We see how the latch is kind of at an angle like like this instead of it being like a cross style tailpiece where where the bar that goes on the back if you're holding the cylinder up where the bar would be flat and then flat but you see the stop right here is at an angle it's about 230 and then it goes back this way till about seven ish or 645 or so so that rotation is different than your key and knob cylinders. If we bust open, and, and you can you can use any key and knob cylinder. The only, uh, they're available in polished brass. Uh, the only caveat is if you have like antique brass, then, or dark bronze, uh, there's kind of a limited, more limited, you know, production of the dark bronze finish. So in this case, if we were just going to switch it out, say we wanted to use a, a wiser key here, right? Say we wanted to use a Yale, anything, any six pin key. And, and the cylinder we did take out, we did. And so uh, it is five, but we're going to cover that real quick. But what you do here is take your keys out of your locks, take the caps off both of them. Yeah, back down, just like that. We're going to dump that out. We're going to dump that out and just keep them together because you never want to mix pins with caps. So I wouldn't want to use this pin with this cap. Key and knob cylinders come with this single cylinder tailpiece. And if we hold it up to the Schlage B60 or even the 660 or even the 562, we see, we see the difference there in the rotation. So see, that's cut out just a bit differently. This would be flat, but it actually angles it. So in this case, instead of this flat style that comes with that, we're definite, no, nope, that's this one. We're definitely gonna wanna take this with the ring. Let's drop it in the cap there, drop it here. Boop, boop, boop. Put our pen and spring back in. that and go ahead cap it up the only problem you run into is since this is a six pin cylinder which is longer it sticks out a little bit more uh, if you're putting this on an inch and three eighths door most standard doors are inch and three quarter for exterior doors uh, you might have a problem with this using it on thinner doors the screws that you take out of either the shroud, the, the, remember in that other video, the old shroud screw, they didn't tap it, presumably to save money, but they, they are self-tapping. So if you really wanted to, to do it there, you could definitely just screw it in or you could even tap it. But the screw actually is fairly long. As long as it grabs this number of threads, that's, is, that's a fair number of threads there and gets it snug. We can see it works now with handle sets the fancy handle sets it's also going to come with this with this trim ring depending on what shape handle set you get there's going to be a decorative shape uh, with that uh, but again the most important thing when switching this is the rotation of the tailpiece so we're going to slip it through i'm not going to screw it together quite yet so i'm just going to take these screws off because i just want to show you that it, it does indeed work it throws the deadbolt out as far as it's supposed to and if i come through and i'll hold it hold it kind of like it's tight on the door it extends fully and retracts fully if it doesn't extend fully or retract fully 
you know you're using the wrong cam or the wrong tailpiece that's got the wrong cutout on it. However, if you were to choose to do it with the core, again, we need to take this off, take our, take our, the most important part, the tailpiece with the, with the correct angle cutouts and that little disc. We're going to go ahead and cap this back because we do not need him anymore. And enter the plugs. There's actually three available. One of them, the, the knob plug, which is what we're going to put in the knob, has the horizontal oval. There's a lever version that is would be up and down instead of horizontal. This little cam was up and down because, of this course, it's sideways in the lock. And then our deadbolt plug. Now you might notice we have the zinc plug. Now this was one of the biggest things that probably upset most locksmiths out there is the fact that they switch to these zinc plugs. The one bonus, I mean, I guess if you're going to look at it cup half full, is it does have this drill, this drill plate. Uh, for what good it does, never really tested that, but there we go. So we're going to take that out. We've already taken the springs out over here. Quick set, we'll just set it aside. And we're going to get our wiser key. So we're going to find a wiser setup key. Do I even have one? Do I even have one out here? I don't, I don't think I do. Let me go. I got a quick set one right here. And, uh, yep, there's a wiser set. So we're going to do a quick set for the knob, a wiser for the deadbolt. So look at that. Same, uh, same, same spacing. So you know, it looks a little different. See the thickness right there. So, yeah, but what is important is it is, it is the same length and the spacing will work. So we can go ahead and key this guy up real quick. This is, uh, oh so what is that oh six two oh four one little issue about it if you look at your chart you say wiser is O, and, and you go so you automatically grab a 168 and there we go look it's it's too shallow there's too much of a a lip there for that to work now you do notice these are still solid brass these came around when when they still use the solid brass plugs but that is too shallow so whenever you run across a problem where the, the numbers don't match up if it's too shallow just just go up one that's all you have to do go up one so instead of zero we're going to go one which is 186 aha and then uh so 6204 six is going to turn into seven which i think is 294 and uh that is way up here somewhere so 294 uh, two is three, which is 222. Oh, and then two again. Now, O again is one, which is 186. And then what was the last one? Four, which is five, which is 258. Where are you? 258. So there we go. Uh, and then we're just going to slip it right back in to the housing. And we see it works wonderfully. So again, we're gonna come back here and put do, 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 put this here, put this here, find our tailpiece out of this mess. It's not this one, it's this one. And then our wonderful zinc cap. Hey, just hold it to make sure it seats correctly. That's kind of one of the biggest things there is just make sure it's like that. And then I kind of hold it, put it on. And if I'm using tweezers, which is why I like pointed tweezers, because I do this a lot, we can get this screwed on. Now it, it is different. The thread, you know, we're now we're mixing a zinc cap with kind of brass plug. Here, I'm gonna to try to use a, an actual wiser tool for this, but there's a number of cap screwy oni tools. Make sure it goes all the way down, then back it off one little notch. 
and try our keys in it. There we go, and then we're gonna drop it in here. And remember, now we're back to normal. We don't have to worry about uh, it being long. So if you were using this on an inch and three eighths door, you definitely want to try to get the conversion plug. Once again, I, I, I buy these at a local place that has them. So I can't begin to tell you where you could come up with these if somebody knows a link to purchase them online since other people may not have a a way to to order them then by all means post it in the comment section who which locksmith distributor has them so now i'm going to rekey this uh schlage f series so again we were able to use the regular key and knob you could put a high security lock in there if you really wanted to but what if you have a doorknob what if you what if you want a wiser key or a quick set key in your doorknob? So we're just gonna test that. We're gonna take this out. All right, just like that. We'll set this aside. We're gonna do this to a quick set key, which looks like two one two four three. We're gonna see if the spacing is or the depths are correct for the the plug. Yes, they are. So. Let's grab another two. This particular kit I have not refilled lately, so I don't have a 171. I'm just gonna use a 174 for this demonstration. Four would be, that's four would be this one out. And then, uh, what was that last one I said? 219? 219. 219. I certainly hope my camera is not glitching out it appears to be glitching out on me over here but there we go look at that quick set key in a collapsible cylinder believe it or not we could actually we could we could do wiser too so at this point we find our clip where did our clip go where did, where did the clip disappeared y'all see it anywhere y'all see the clip anywhere oh there it is hey i know it was somewhere up here Okay, snap on. As normal, find your knob. Make sure you're putting it in the hollowed out section. There is one little area in there where that cap's allowed to go up. Boop. Hold that there and bring in our display. I know it's a little dark, but it is late in the day, so apologies for that. Uh, we're gonna pull our key out just a bit. That way we can hold it steady in there. Uh, one of the worst things about any knob is letting the cylinder kind of like get all wonky in there. So I always kind of pull the key halfway out, slip it over until it stops. We veer over here. You probably can't see it, but you see that retainer right there? At this point with the key halfway out, you can take, you can literally take even another key. All right. Push it in, push it the rest of the way. It won't go until you turn the key one way or the other so now we have a schlage knob with the convenience and be able to get out be unlocked don't have to turn the button and your quick set key and you can match it to your quick set key the double again where are we we are we we got show wiser right there and uh we're not gonna put the shroud on necessarily so it's just a simple matter of tightening it down because this is just a demonstration. Since this was a two and an eighth inch hole, I would definitely use the shroud. But, you know, since we don't have shrouds anymore, y'all, I guess it really doesn't matter. When there's no shroud, it makes it like wobbly on a, on a, on a door. Like it's, it's not, I don't know, it's, it's just not, you know, it doesn't it's not as solid and of course like we mentioned in that video if this was not protected by metal you could jam a oh i put that on kind of crooked you could jam a ice pick uh down in there yet another reason why shrouds were good is because it kind of helped with this crooked see how we're crooked right there so, so we're gonna pull the key out and then and then turn it so that it's so that it's straight just like that and then come back and tighten it down just enough to show you that we now have a wiser key 
and a Schlage lock or quick set key and a Schlage knob. Again, mainly the main thing for this is if somebody's front door handle set breaks, I'll put a link right here in the, in the thing. That would be your, your, your best bet. So if you're able to get these, uh, it's up to you whether you want to get knob and lever plugs as well. Uh, but definitely deadbolts because it does allow you to sell a better quality handle set being the Schlage who has prettier designs built better honestly they look better everything about the handle sets which is the thumb thing with the knob on the inside is better it uses the standard deadbolt so if you needed it to match your Schlage like say you had 10 other doors in your house with quick set or wiser locks then you could just match your new Schlage handle set, which is going to be more expensive, especially because this plug is an optional item and it does make it even more. However, showing the factors, showing the shapes, the designs, the reliability, the less problems with the quick set latch. We have done video after video after video of quick set problems, quick set handle set problems, and they're our most popular video. So if you want a quick set key and you want a, a nice handle, if you have a quick set key for your house and you have a really nice front door and you want to put a great handle set on it, you have the two options of using a locksmith to sell you a key and knob cylinder or if they have the ability to get the plug. Again, I don't know where you can order those online. I know that's going to be the biggest question is where do I get it? Where do I get it? I can't answer that question. The only question I can answer about that is, is yes, there is indeed a wiser plug to make Schlage knobs work. It makes it way more expensive, way more, you know, $15, $20 more. Uh, you still have the collapsible cylinder. You still have the zinc housing. Uh, it, they're hard to get a hold of. Almost ideally as a locksmith, if you wanted to sell a Schlage handle set, you can kind of go for the Kia knob style cylinder of this thing available in all sorts of things. So if you wanted to put a high security cylinder in a Schlage something fancy, pretty handle set, as long as you're able to change that tailpiece from the one that comes in the Schlage deadbolt to that key and knob cylinder, as long as they're compatible, which it's it's called a Schlage compatible cylinder or a Schlage style key and knob cylinder. If you don't want to go the plug, you could actually put in these are these cylinders are actually far superior, especially when you talk about MX cylinders or Everest, anything like that. As long as you're not putting it in an inch and three eighths door. You should be good to go with that. The only thing is, is the, the face of it sticks out a little bit more, you know, from the front of the deadbolt compared to the actual plug. Uh, but a lot of people don't care about that, especially when you get a cylinder that has a little bit tighter tolerances. It's not made out of that, you know, metal or whatever. And if you want to put funky keyways in there, like, uh, you know, Corbin Russell D1s or Corbin Russell L4s, any number of Schlage style key and knob cylinders, as long as you use that tailpiece that came with it, should be good to go on it. So again, can't answer the question as to where to get them. I just thought I'd throw it out there in case you weren't aware that there are plugs available for knobs, for levers, I might add, lever handles in the Schlage variety are also much better than the quick set versions i've seen time after time there are far far fewer callbacks or issues related to schlage locks compared to quick set latch problems and uh, that again if for doorknobs you know not being able to unlock it without turning the button makes it a little bit easier uh, the lever handles from quick set just they're not they're not great so anyway in case you didn't know now you know there are plugs available you can switch out the deadbolts with key and knob style cylinders of any variety as long as you have an inch and three quarter door that's important because that cylinder back is sticking out too far if you try to use that on an inch and three eighths door or like an interior bedroom door that's not 
inch and three quarter, then you will have problems because that sticking out further is gonna hit the latch, cause it to get all wonky. So anyway, there you go. In case you didn't know, now you know. Thanks for watching, y'all. Make sure and hit that like button, and, uh, and we'll catch you next video.